Welcome to a video on the trapezoid rule of numerical integration. When trying to evaluate definite integrals analytically, sometimes it's very difficult or even impossible to determine a function's antiderivative. So when the analytic method fails, we use a numerical approach to approximate a definite integral. And the trapezoid rule is a numerical method to approximate a definite integral using trapezoids. Let's take a look at how this is going to work. Let's say we want to use a trapezoid to approximate the definite integral of this function on the interval from 0 to 8. You can see if we use one trapezoid in green, this area is much larger than the area bounded by the function in the x-axis represented by the definite integral. However, watch what happens as we increase the number of trapezoids. You can quickly see that as we increase the number of trapezoids, the sum of the area of those trapezoids is going to approach the value of that definite integral. Let's go and take a look at another function. Again, watch as the number of trapezoids increases. You can see it quickly approaches the value of that definite integral on the given interval. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. Let's do a little review first. Remember, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. So to determine the area of a trapezoid, we have the area equals one-half times the quantity of base one plus base two times the height, and this would be the diagram. However, we're going to be using right trapezoids, which means we have two right angles in the trapezoid. The trapezoid will also be rotated from what we're used to seeing. So this will be base one and base two, and the height would be the length of this side here. Let's say we wanted to approximate this definite integral in yellow by using four trapezoids on the interval from A to B. Well, first, if we have four trapezoids, that means n is going to equal four. So what we would do is we want to divide this interval into four equal parts. And one way to do that would be to take the length of the entire interval, or B minus A, and then divide it by n. So when we divide the interval into four equal parts, because our n is equal to four, this would be A, which we'll call x sub zero. This would be x sub one, x sub two, x sub three, x sub four, which is also equal to B. We have four equal intervals. Next, what we would do is construct our four trapezoids. So they would look like this. So our first trapezoid, our second trapezoid, our third trapezoid, and our fourth trapezoid. And we can see this is going to be a pretty good approximation of this definite integral. Let's go ahead and label this trapezoid one, trapezoid two, three, and four. Remember the area of one of the trapezoid is one half times the quantity base one plus base two times the height. Well, we're gonna go ahead and use it in this form. We'll have the height times base one plus base two divided by two. So to approximate this definite integral, we'll determine the area of these four trapezoids, where these function values would be the bases of the trapezoids and the length of each x interval would be the height. And notice they're all equal to each other. And so we can use the formula b minus a divided by n to represent each height of the trapezoid. So we'd have the height times the sum of the two bases divided by two for the area of trapezoid one. That'd be f of x sub zero plus f of x sub one divided by two. So this product here would be the height times half of the sum of the bases so this would be the area of trapezoid one. Since the height is the same, we'll just write the sum of the two bases divided by two here for the second trapezoid. Well, that would be f of x sub one plus f of x sub two divided by two. So this product would be the area of trapezoid two. For trapezoid three, we have f of x sub two plus f of x sub three divided by two. And then for the last trapezoid, we have f of x sub three plus f of x sub four divided by two. Again, each of these products, when we distribute, represents the area of each of these trapezoids. So when we find the sum of those, that'll approximate the area of this definite integral. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one more thing. 
Notice they all have a denominator of two, so we could factor this two out. So we would have b minus a divided by two n. And notice that there are two f of x sub ones, two f of x sub twos, and two f of x sub threes. So simplifying the numerator, we would have f of x sub zero plus two f of x sub one plus two f of x sub twos and two f of x sub threes and we have one f of x sub four. So I want you to notice the pattern of these coefficients. We have one, two, 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 one. So we'll always start with a coefficient of one, then we'll have twos and we'll end with a one, regardless of what n is. Let's go ahead and formalize the trapezoid rule. Using the trapezoid rule, we can approximate this definite integral using this formula, and this formula represents the area of a certain number of trapezoids based upon the value of n. And again, I want you to notice that we have one f of x, two, 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 and so on, but we end with a one as well. So as n approaches infinity, the right hand is going to approach the value of that definite integral. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So you want to evaluate this definite integral on the interval from one to three using four trapezoids, and therefore n is equal to four. Here's the value of a, and here's the value of b. We would divide this into four equal intervals, like so, and then form our trapezoids. Let's go ahead and do that. There's trapezoid one, trapezoid two, trapezoid three, and trapezoid four is actually a triangle. So now that we have the idea down, let's go ahead and use the formula. So this is going to be approximately b minus a divided by two n, well, b is three and a is one, so we have three minus one divided by two times four. One last thing we might want to do, remember the width of each interval is equal to b minus a divided by n. So three minus one divided by four, that's good. that'll be two fourths or one half. That's important because it'll help us get started when we take a look at these function values. Start with f of x sub zero, which would be f of one, plus two times f of x sub one. Well, as long as we know that b minus a divided by n is equal to one half, we'll just add one half to the preceding x value. So we had one here, so we'll have f of one and a half, or 1.5, plus two times f of, we'll add another one half, or 0.5, to 1.5, that'd be f of two. And you might ask, well, how do you know when to stop? We'll stop when we get to three, because three is where this interval ends. So plus two times f of 2.5. Remember on this last one, we'll only have a coefficient of one, so one f of three. Okay, so now here we're going to have three minus one, that's two over eight, that's one fourth, or 0 0.25. Now to determine all of these function values, we'll use the calculator. Let's go ahead and get that out. What we're gonna do is press y equals, and we'll type in our function into y1, which is nine minus x squared. Now we're gonna go back to the home screen, and we can evaluate all of these at one time. If we press vars, right arrow, enter, and then enter to select y1, we wanna evaluate this function at x equals one. So we'll use function notation. Instead of f, we're using y1. Plus two times y1 of 1.5. So press vars, right arrow, enter, enter again and then 1.5 plus two times f of two. So again, vars, right arrow, enter, enter, and then in parentheses a two. And we'll just keep doing this until we reach an x value of three. We have 2.5. Be careful here, the last function value is not multiplied by two, so we'll just press plus y1 of three. And we have 37 for the sum of these function values. Let's go ahead and write that down and 37 times 0.25 will give us 9.25. So we can say that this definite integral is approximately 9.25. Let's go ahead and determine the actual value to compare. And we can do that on the calculator as well. If we press math, option nine, type in our integrand, nine minus x squared, comma x, comma one, comma three, and it should be very close to 9.25, and it is, which is a good check that we have done this correctly. Okay, I hope you found this presentation helpful. Thank you for watching.